progress, trying to get as much done as we can. We're so many months behind what we were hoping we'd be at that we're just pushing, pushing, pushing to try and get get done hopefully this summer maybe. So tonight we are going to take our massive pile of boards and we are going to rip them in the table saw into our inch and a half by inch and a half spindles for the railing. Dusty. Oh my goodness. So look at this mountain we have already. So I was trying to do the math while we were cutting. So we're taking off an eighth of an inch every cut. We do three cuts per board. So that's three eighths of an inch per board. And then we did 40 boards. So that's a hundred and twenty eighths that we're cutting off and then 120 divided by 8 is 15 so we're taking off 15 inches of inch and a half material if my math is right isn't that insane like basically it's taking a two by 15 inch board and just shredding it onto the floor. All done. We got 101 <laughs> sticks of wood. Oh, I'm dying from the dust. <coughs> I'm gonna do this. Sort of a part modern-ish, part rustic-ish, kind of log, kind of not. So, little solar update for you guys. So tonight we ran the table saw. We ran the table saw for, well you saw in the time lapse there, for, oh I'm just covered. Ugh. We ran the table saw for hours, like literally hours. And that thing, when you flick it on, like lights flicker a little bit because she pulls a lot of power. And we were like laying into it, right, because we wanted to get through those boards fast so we were just running the boards through so she was working hard and it only used uh six percent of the battery because we're at 94 percent still so i mean you're pulling a lot of power to do that plus the furnace has been kicking on constantly and running and you know we got lights and everything going like that so seems to be working pretty good we're finally confident enough with the solar in the back of generator now we're gonna put this old girl back in the shed and the million liters of gas. Oh, I need a better camera. It's a bald eagle just playing around over there in the wind. But look at this junk. Got that blizzard they're talking about. It's melting off the deck, thank goodness. But yeah, anywhere where it's kind of protected, it's white again. Very, very ready for spring at this point. Ah, oh, go back inside, it's too cold. Today, at 80 acres, we are going to attempt to turn all of our little square balusters into round-ended square balusters, if that makes any sense. Went and got the big old drill, got some clamps. The idea is I'm gonna try and clamp them to the side of this, we'll slide it over, so that way it'll hold it for me and I can stand here, drill them. I also have to cut them down to length, but I'm pretty certain that a lot of them are going to end up getting uh, broken. Wayne put a light inside the closet here for us under the stairs. 
which is fantastic. Where is this? Is what I need. This thing. I need this. Ta-da. So we showed in a past video this thing. Basically, giant pencil sharpener. And hopefully, it'll do all of those. We've got three piles that I need to do. And that's extras because guaranteed there's going to be a bunch of them breaking. So it's super annoying when you get stuff like this. Like I want to set up the saw here. And I know that this thing is nice and flat and level. And the floor is very not flat or level. Well, I guess we'll see if this works. One thing I forgot about these drills is there's no variable trigger. It is on or off. So when you throw it on here, it just goes. You're just right through it. And then that'll be what you see if you go like that. So you'll see a little bit of the round and that. And I think Tegan said she wants to just touch this up with the sandpaper because it is a little bit prickly. People would learn. Don't touch it. But maybe that's just me. I would just be like, well... You tell someone not to touch it, and if they do touch it, and they get slivers, and they're like, well, I told you. All right, so I've done a few. I set up the laser. I got it locked because, of course, that table's not sitting right, which blah, blah, blah. But it seems like if I go too much of an angle one way or the other, I get a goofy cut or whatever you want to call it. So you see that one? So I think it's because I'm not starting right perfect which by myself it's kind of difficult to tell if you're level in both directions because obviously there's no level on this so i threw the laser on here set it in the center of the board now theoretically if i do that like that i should be able to look down the gun and see if i'm level pretty genius maybe it's definitely better but I still don't know if it's just kind of centering itself on the actual, uh, like the grain, so to speak. Like it's kind of following the grain and determining its own spot. But I also think too, like Tag and I had talked when we had first set these up and we tried some. When you stand back here, right, like when they're all up on there and they're four inch spacing, you're probably not going to really notice. So one thing I don't think that we mentioned is, so the wood that we got for doing this is it's spruce boards, right? But we made sure that we picked up the Emium. So Emium lumber. So if you go into your lumber store uh, and you want to do some finishing stuff, if you ask for the Emium lumber, that's, uh, that's the quality that you want to get. done a handful of them and basically there's zero consistency there's it just depends on the wood I mean it doesn't matter what I do some of them they angle the shaft some of them they're not the same on either side like that one had a knot there these ones these are ones that came out like really lopsided and then I tried to run the bit on it again but kind of forcing it at an angle but then it makes it it tapers this portion too because then the blade starts to catch in here and I don't know doing the best I can and I mean it's we're using spruce so not uh, can't complain too much I guess I have done 39 of them. I don't know why Tegan made a stack of 39, but she did. I'm just hoping that we can make these all work. And There's a bunch of extras, so the ones that are really, really bad, we're just going to, I don't know, use them as firewood or something. Very, very, very time-consuming and labor-intensive firewood. Mm -hmm. 
railing things so I have 98 done 30 or 36 there so still got a lot to go it seems to have gotten better as I went I sharpened the knives on the actual bit itself and it seemed to make it a little more consistent I also adjusted it so I feel like this pile, most of them are pretty decent. See what it is. And it's it's not hard to do. It's super boring though. Oh my goodness. I've been listening to music and just you take one, drill the or you take it, clamp it, drill it, flip it, cut it, clamp it, drill it, stack it, get another one. Over and over and over and over. 98 times. Alright, I finally finished. So now I got to go through them and then I'll probably sort them between ones that are really nice, ones that are maybes, and ones that are like if we absolutely have to use them. I didn't have a single one where the corner exploded. Like I thought for sure that it would be like one in three because you figure you're putting a square into a round hole with two knives. So it just catches those corners. So I thought for sure it would just snap them off, but uh, it didn't, it worked. I had to sharpen the blade a second time and that helped quite a bit. Basically, basically it just gets to the point where you're pushing so hard that you just can't get it to cut. So brought a bucket full of that wood chips out here. So I was kind of curious as to like the fire danger on this stuff. Let's see how easily it lights. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I didn't want this stuff sitting in the house there. That was the tiniest little spark. Maybe that'll do it again here. Like just barely, barely, barely have to touch it. All right, well, let's go clean up the rest of it, bring it out here. So I also picked up a uh, fire extinguisher for the house here. I actually got two of them, but I left one at our rental right now because we didn't have one there. And Figured having a fire extinguisher is good to have around now. One thing that uh, I haven't told you guys. So when we were starting the build, you need insurance, right? So usually you get builder's insurance, which is crazy, crazy expensive because, you know, the risk of damages essentially or fire is you know at an all-time high when you're building so they charge accordingly we got set up with an insurance company that just charged us um, a regular rate as if we had already built the house so just normal insurance but you get 365 days to build the house first time home builders something or other right so we did that so now that it's been over 365 days house still isn't done we're not moved into it yet they contacted us and they nearly doubled our insurance for this year because they switched us to the construction insurance so we pay everything at once like we don't pay monthly so we just paid for the full year so now the goal is the sooner we can be done and get in then they'll refund us 
the difference of putting us back to just regular homeowner insurance, call it like an abandoned or a vacant property. So it's as if, you know, there's no one living here, so it's super high risk and blah, 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 blah. And it's being built, so they jacked up the rate like crazy, which sucks. A uh -huh. little cleaner. So by volume, it was almost 15 gallons of sawdust and wood chips. And Tagan's over here sanding some of these down. Where's one that you've finished? Those ones? But these are ones that are all sanded down now, so they look much, much nicer. Come on, focus. Sorted all of the railing pieces there, and I crunched some numbers. So, our pile, actually I'll start with our the bad side. So, our garbage ones over there, they're good for nothing, they are ugly. They have just, you know, they walked way out one side or whatever, or both sides are no good, and, you know, mangled ones, just bad. Not, not usable. So that was 28 of our 135 that we started with. So 20.7%. We have 13 here that are like our last resort. If we need to use them, we'll use them, but we don't want to have to. So that was 9.6%. And then 67, so the ones that you already sanded and these ones, so that's 67 of the 135. So that's 49.6% of them. So less than half were actually like good. They turned out nice. Then I had to go back through all of those maybe ones and I had to pull out 27 more that are good enough, which comes out to exactly 20%. So yeah, you're looking at, you get about 70% of them are going to turn out good enough to use. Um, and then, yeah, 30% of them are basically just trash. And that was, you know, starting with as nice of boards as we possibly could, ripping them down as perfect as we could, cutting them to length as perfect as you can to get rid of the knots and stuff, drilling them as perfect as we can to get them down to few circles. And there's just wasted, right? But, uh, but yeah, even like these ones, and I mean, might be a little bit on the fussier side, but like say this one, so that this is a good enough one. So that end is pretty nice, but then this end is kind of goofy, right? So you can see it's not nice and centered. So I just thought that might be something interesting for people thinking of doing it. Tegan got, what'd you figure? 48 of these done. So 48 of them are all sanded down nice. She got those ones to go and those ones. Are you sick and tired of doing that yet? Back at the lumber yard. Got our railing posts, custom cut, all of our interior doors. Arthur helping me out. And that's a whole load of beams that I wish I had, but can't afford. Come on, I was gonna get a nice video of you powering through, carrying the last door up here, Tegan. It's door number eight. You can do it. I believe in you. Have to insert some inspirational music here. Da -da 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 -da. Shut that up. Bonus points if you do it in slow motion. Oh, you got it. You got it. Don't die. Oh, look at your knees. Oh, like rubber. Oh no. Goodness. So these are our special order pine 4x4s and they are planed on four sides. So you can see the ends are kind of all random from it going through the mill. And they're all the centers of the trees to theoretically have the least chance of twisting. They had them all banded together. We had to cut the banding to bring it up here so they might move. But we need roughly four feet out of each one and they gave us seven footers. We asked, we asked for sixes and they sent seven. So I'm not going to complain about that, but I mean, we probably got charged for an extra foot each. 
They are a little naughtier than I was hoping. I'd hope they'd be more clear. So then that way we could have better wood to work with. I'm guessing that these are very, very, very small trees, considering that if that's the center and there's that many knots, then that means that it was right close to the outside already. Because usually on a tree, once it grows, you don't have the knots in the center of the tree so much. Kind of, sort of. Anyway, so these are going to be the railing posts. So these are going to go up here every four feet or whatever it is. And the biggest thing is we have to notch them the whole way down the LVL. So we have to cut out, you know, an inch and a half and then whatever it is, 14 or 15 inches or something out of this and then have the railing height. And that's because we need to be able to tie the bottoms into this. And then we can run our GRKs into there. Just every one of these videos is just Tegan standing in the background. It's been literally days and days and days. So the idea is put the board up there, push it into the ceiling, and then that way Tegan can adjust it for me as we go, but she doesn't have to hold it up. The original plan was me on one ladder, her on the other, hold it up and just fight the whole thing. I think this is a better plan that we have now. Okay, so we got it up on the lift here. Tegan is manipulating it. So what we decided to do is we're sticking it an extra eighth of an inch out. So then that'll give us a little bit of leeway when we put our two by 12 on there. So if anything, we will end up just cutting an eighth of an inch off the front side of this and we can kind of strip it down to hopefully match perfectly. And then on the back side here, just right there has a dip because wood is wood. The rest of it seems pretty decent. And then probably there'll be a little deviation on that side. But using this thing was definitely a lifesaver. I just said to Tegan, aren't you glad I didn't make you just hold this for like three hours? Because I'm like up and down, up and down, measure, 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 put in a screw, pushing, twisting, like fighting it to get it where we want it. Tegan can just stand there and laugh at me now. All right, we got it up. It's pretty straight if you look down the edge of it, which is the most important part. And then on the back side here, we just have, I'm not even sure if that's the board because it was a pretty straight board. That crack there is just from our wall being out of square. And then any little dip that you have, basically, you know, every two feet where we have one of those uh, rafters going across, or floor trusses, it's nice and tight, but then in between the drywall is kind of varied, so you have these, you know, little shadowy spots, but and then the tail end there dips off. And but yet, if you run your straight edge on the board itself, it's perfectly straight. So that's the ceiling is just varied. So on one hand, if we try and force it up and make it tighter, so it looks better here, it's going to make the uh, two by twelve line up with the two by ten worse along the front edge where the forty five is, which is kind of where people are really going to be looking at it theoretically so we want to make that nicer than what just the line against the ceiling is okay measured 12 times cut four times now we're going to test fit it see if we can go over those two light boxes oh and i put the boxes on too okay we put it up and down a million times finally got it cut it to size just smacked the corner broke the whole corner off on the ladder take and glued it back on now we're going to put our screws in ahead of time and then we got to glue it quick and then slap it up and then adjust it, screw it in. And we might have too much of a gap on that one because somehow we were a quarter inch out on our measuring and then we double triple checked measuring from there to the wall, there to the wall and from board to there and everything is the same but when we put it up there there's a quarter inch difference so there's some type of waviness or something happening so that sucks but is what it is. So again, what we're gonna do is we got every, right, well, we have every two foot on center for our joint, not every one foot, and then we have every two feet again for the top, so it matches. Tegan's gonna do wood glue the whole way, and then before it drips, we gotta slap it up there and screw it in place. This might be fun to watch. All right, so, we have a weird transition here where we're going from being a 45 degree angle 
and we're in line with the LDL to being a half inch set out because the drywall sits out further. And then in order to hide our joints to make it look like one massive beam. So this is a 20 footer, so there's no joints. But on the top here, we're like 30 something feet, so you need a joint. So we matched it right where our railing post is gonna go, so it'll hide that joint completely. And then here, we're gonna match on that railing post, which means we have to bridge across this joint. We can't, we could, but we don't want to, just come up here with a 45, and then from here go to a notched out half an inch. So we got a little sample board here. So it's 45 that comes from that direction. Then it goes to a half an inch deep, 5 16 inch tall, or whatever you want to call it, little cut. And that way, the theory is, when it goes like that, it'll match up. So this tells me we can take out more than, yeah, we have to take out more of the back side. All right, here she is. Half inch notch, transitioning to the 45. Our brains are exploding from figuring this one out. So here's where we're at with that funky piece. Had a weird bow in it, couldn't figure it out. Turns out when we ran it through the saw, right at this knot, the blade walked out. So then I just spent probably an hour just whittling it down. Because of course it wasn't enough to put it back in the saw to do it, but it was leaving because it was, you know, an eighth of an inch here, and then this was also bowed out a sixteenth of an inch, it was like three sixteenths, so it was just this huge gap. And so I took our straight edge and basically just started running it along here so I could see where it was. So now, go here. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Right, more wood glue, more screws ready to go. So I don't know if I showed, but on the other one, what we did here was afterwards, we did two foot on center on the front, and then we did one in between from the bottom up. So it's screwed from both directions. So this side turned out pretty nice, which is good, because that's our longest portion. That portion here, not going to be the nicest, but we did what we could. This is definitely the OSHA compliant process for gluing. No harnesses, no hats, no safeties. But boy, do we get stuff done fast. Almost done. All right. So the beam is in. That crack in there is that one that we were really fighting with. So you can just see little bits of glue sticking through. So next time we're here, Tegan will put more wood filler like she was doing there into those. So this is one of coffee and then you're doing one layer of, what is this one? The oh, it's dark walnut. It's hard because lighting is terrible. Don't mind the light bulb. <laughs> but yeah, we got all the beam, or Tegan got all the beams stained up now. So it definitely makes it look like a one giant beam. It just gives it that nice, dark, chocolatey brown type of color. And it does coordinate with everything very, very nicely. Love it. Loving it. Tonight we begin our adventure with railing posts. So it seems like our steps are going to be put it on the chop saw, chop the end off so it's nice and square, then measure and mark our notch that we need to take out, go to the table saw, Cut it one way, flip it, cut it the other way because the table saw is not deep enough to cut right through three and a half inches. And then cut it to the overall length that we need. And that way it gives us a little bit of leeway if the notch doesn't go so well. Got the laser set up. First post is cut. So one thing that we are kind of going to be fighting is every one of our posts is a little bit corkscrewed. And then... Drop these on here. 
basically because the 2x12 is cupped and the floor trusses aren't perfect, we end up with some weird gaps. And as the laser will show, nothing's level either. Right, it doesn't just sit nicely, so we need to either shim or shave or whatever to get these to all be nice and straight up and down. <sighs> oh my goodness. Oh. So we need this to do the cuts on the railing that we need to do. Radial arm saw that we got from my dad's cousin there. Not getting rid of it, so we got it for a wicked deal which will be great. But of course, we don't have the tractor here. We could have just picked this up with the pallet forks and brought it over to the house at least and then just carried up the ramp. So we're just hiking it the whole way from the shed to the house. And the plan is we're going to put it up on the deck and just leave it there. We're just going to put a tarp on it and just... It's going to live its life outside till we're done. Which, from my math, is going to be like three weeks of doing railing at this rate. All right. We got it up the stairs, or up the ramp, I guess. This thing is a behemoth, but it'll let us cut. So I need to take a quarter inch off of this end and then have it taper down to nothing taken off of that end to get the whole post at the bottom a quarter inch over to bring it back over to be nice and plumb. If you do it on the table saw, your board is upside down so you can't see where you're cutting which it needs to be free-handed because it's just goofy this one you can see your line as you're cutting and then you can run it right through so should work we've never actually used one of these before fingers crossed that i don't lose any fingers definitely throws the stuff right back at your face but i think it's just because of the way i'm using it get this out of here but yeah that's a weird wedge Paper. so it's still even with this it still did the same thing it cut it not quite perfectly we got like an eighth of an inch So it works pretty good for that because then you can actually see the blade. So I was just kind of following it. We'll have to just sand down that little bit. but Or we just use the little thingamajinger and mm. chop it a bit because it's on the inside. You're not going to really see. Just so it's not fighting with their other Maybe. board. Pretty close. We did it! We got one, the first one! Oh my goodness, like it's what, nine o'clock at night right now? And we both got here at like five. So we spent four hours and we got one post done. Still needs to be all stained and all that kind of stuff when it's all put together, but oh my goodness. We ended up, we put a non-black GRK. We got black GRKs down there. We put a gold one through here, it was a little longer one we had left over from the timber framing outside. And we ran that through right into the studs that we found that were behind there to hold it in. Just because it was kind of, everything was just moving so much. So at least on this one we could get it so it's nice and straight. We'll work our way back down here towards the laser. And then that way we'll know exactly that every single one of these will be nice and plumb. All right. So we cut one direction with the table saw, flip it, cut it the other direction. Then we brought it over to the radial saw, set it up, cut this, which is our straight line. And then I'm going to finish it with a hand saw either way, make it nice and pretty. Then we have to make sure that this distance to this distance is exactly 16 and a half, which is what we need. Then we go from this distance 
to the top 57 inches and that gives us a finished post. Then we test to see if it actually sits on the beam up there nicely. If not, then we have to cut it and adjust it like the last one. Lots of steps. We got three up. So we seem to kind of have a system now. So we're using the laser for left to right and then, or I guess forward and backwards, and then we're using a level for left and right. They might end up all over the place, but for now, I mean, we're starting with them perfect. It's very slow going, but they're literally as perfect as we can get, given the fact that they are pine. We did it. We have all the posts on this main side done. We are pretty close on all of these. Most of where it's not in line is because it's a corkscrew. So we have it lined up at inch and a half here and all the way down at the end it's the same thing inch and a half. So I mean like we're a quarter out, quarter inch out in three and a half inches with how rotated these are. And the only way we could avoid that would have been to have all the bottoms rotated which then around the kitchen you would just see it all the time and then they would just be super weird rotated. Well, we realized that we made a fatal flaw for our uh, railing here. So on this side, we didn't add any blocking when we put in the drywall. On this side, when we did these, we added in blocking behind it so we could screw against it. So this GRK goes right into, you know, our blocking behind and then the top 2x4 that hangs down this one goes into the blocking this side uh, this one goes into our 2x4 nice and strong this one doesn't go into anything we're gonna take a massive wood screw put it in at an angle like that down into the stairs tagging said it's okay so it's okay if I say something's okay still has to go through tagging first so we ended up putting two screws in. We did one toenail through here and down into the two by 12 for the stairs. And then we put one, then we put another one in there, in the back. And that one I actually went in the staircase underneath here and just blindly aimed through the two by 12 at an angle and it basically hit center and angled it in and it was perfect. First try, Tegan said that was the best thing I've ever done. So I got that going for me. Right, so this is gonna be our corner post. We have one, one post that has to go on the corner. And of course, this is our straightest-ish post, which is still not very straight, but what are you gonna do? So we have to notch out both corners on here. So we set our blade at two inches up, an inch and a half. That should be two inches, two inches, inch and a half, inch and a half. Run it one way, run it the other way. Hope for the best. Right, so this is how not to cut a two inch by two inch wooden dowel. So you're gonna to wanna to start with a four by four or three and a half by three and a half custom milled pine post. And then you wanna take your table saw set it at two inches, cut whatever length you want either direction, which is then gonna leave a huge portion here where it can't be cut. Then you want to very sketchily put this sideways, you know, like a diamond in your miter saw, cut as deep as you can with that, still leaving a whole bunch in there. Then you take your oscillating tool, which only reaches an inch and a half, and then you cut as much as you can with that. Then you take your X-Acto knife set it at two inches, and then you try and get as much of that as you can, and then you take a claw hammer and you just force it till it breaks, and then you take your oscillating tool for like another 15 minutes and you just cut out all the stuff you left behind. Super easy. Right, 
So this corner one here, we actually pretty much got it first try, but once we were up here, we were thinking about it. So we moved these GRKs out to only an inch in instead of inch and a half. And we angled them and pre-drilled them so we didn't split the boards. So in that way we get away from the steel corners on here. And well, we were on our last post, of course. And I finished my cut, but then I had to pull it back out. It jumped, pulled the board, and it took a chunk out of here, which of course we see both sides of it there. It doesn't get hidden. So we put in two little pieces I whittled down and then uh, glued them in and then put some wood filler in there. And then I'll have to sand it down all nice and hopefully you won't be able to see it because it looked really bad. It was like a quarter inch almost. Tegan was not impressed. <sighs> we knew that this second side was going way too well. So, of course, everything has to fight us on this build. Can't have anything that just goes like perfectly smooth. It's always something. It's things like this that are making the house take forever to build where we are taking the time to measure and cut and sand everything so it's a pressed fit and fasteners are optional. So we decided to do just two GRKs four inches in and center on all these so in that way we can do it continuous the same way all the way around because over there we can't go any lower than center on the board so we'll do them all like that then. The last one in, you can't even tell where my little extra cut was there. Got it GRK'd right into the stud there. So we actually looked back in uh, one of the old YouTube videos. I think it was the one where we were doing the roof craning and a bunch of other stuff. And I actually looked back so I could see where all the web trussing was here and what the wall looked like here. So I knew where I could put my screws into. I got all the two by eight the whole way along there. They're just saying with the two by eight on there now, it really makes that fake beam look like a real beam with just the floor on top of it and then a cap there. Once we get the railing all up, Tegan's going to stain it and it's going to be like a lighter coffee stain probably. It probably looks similar to the ceiling. Yeah, something like the ceiling. Make in progress. We've been coming here. This is, well it's Saturday today and we put in a full long day today. Pretty much every night that we can we've been coming here. One night this week I came, did one railing post, it went horribly wrong, I had to keep cutting it and shaving it and sanding it, and I had heat stroke really bad, and I was like, I'm going home, so I left early, Tegan stayed and did a bunch of other stuff, but other than that, we've been just pushing hard to try and get as much done as we can. All the 2 by 8 is on. So tonight's adventure, we are making the two by fours that are gonna go on the bottom of a railing and the top of the railing that then we have to drill all the holes in for the wooden dowels to sit in. Because it's so hard to find good lumber, hard to find good two by fours, what we decided to do is we are using up a bunch of our leftover two by six and a couple pieces of two by eight. I gotta basically go through all these rip off whatever side I don't want first, making sure that I leave my three and a half inch side that I do want, and then I will have my size. Oh, and actually we're not doing two by four. We're gonna go three inch, then that way we can get more of the garbage cut off of these, and it'll give a nice little reveal between the three and a half inch wide post. A lot of work, a lot of effort, but it should look good. Got all of our inch and a half by three inch pieces. There's 22 of them because we have 11 openings. So one's going to go top, one's going to go bottom. They're both going to be on the flat. No gap at the bottom so that way stuff can't fall off the ledge like basically dust onto the dining room table. Alright, so we spent like two hours figuring out 
how we were going to position this board because we were trying to figure out how we're going to hide our flooring edge coming up to this and then we were trying to figure out our spacing so I can figure out where my two middle screws will go which I can't do center, I have to kind of kitty corner them or something basically this is what we came up with, we're going to go center on the post like we originally planned I'm going to have to notch out a little 45 on all these for a flooring to go into it and then we're going to run this or a variation of this, some type of little trim piece that's going to go on top of there against the flooring, nailed in, and I'll hide all that. So to mark these, I'm just following the line of the post and then making my line on my board itself. So you can see there, like that's how much that one is twisted from there to there. Not too terribly bad, but these were some of our nice ones. Um, but like, see, this one, right, this one is that much out so we're cutting out to match at least because these are so they're like candy canes all twisted up Got all my holes marked for the bottom ones. Whole way around, so I got a whole bunch of drilling to do. Well, we got one piece done after probably an hour. Because, I mean, like when you're drilling through knots and stuff like that, and trying to keep the top nice and pretty. Which, I am using just a super old um, one inch spade bit here. And this is actually from my grandpa. When he passed away, I got all of his tools, and this was one of the bits that came with all of his tools. So that's kind of neat. And then here's the, uh, the plan B once the other one dies. This one's a little bit more chewed up, but they both seem to cut pretty well. But a tip that I don't think a lot of people know about, when you go to start, put it in reverse, and then spin it and press down as hard as you can to get a little line into the wood. And then that way, when you put it back to going forward again, you don't just take a huge chunk of the top of your board off because you're down about, you know, a sixteenth of an inch from spinning it in reverse, basically, you know, getting that first bit of cut. But by spinning it backwards, you don't have the teeth just eating right into the wood. So it re removes some of it, but not all of it. Makes for a nice, pretty smooth hole. I'm drilling it a bit and then I pull it out with my finger what I can, drill a bit more, then I shop back it out and then I'm taking this guy and I can put that in there and I can easily see where I'm at. I figure I'd start with like a kind of middle weird railing. It's not over there where you're going to look at it. It's not right at the top where you're going to look at it. it. looks so red. The sun is setting and very smoky outside, so the sun is like a weird orange red color. Oh, I got the long run done. Look at them all. I still got those ones to do. I had to sharpen my spade bit because I don't know if I hit a screw or something. Or... And I have to do all this again, but on the top side. Hey, Tegan. I got another mess for you to clean up. Last one for this side. Halfway through, battery dies. God. All the holes done. I think there's 96 of them. So now, basically I have to do that entire process a second time, mark every single one of these on the top, and then drill all of them again to match the holes down below. So we're going to have a 2x6 on the top of this, but I just put this in here just to take a look, whoa, almost died, to see kind of once this is on, right, if you extend it, just straight line it, it hides a lot actually, because if I take this off, you will see, <laughs> this is very not straight, <laughs> but yeah, these things are just twisting more and more by the day. What does Tegan think? This on there 
like that. And then this goes straight shot that way. You can't tell the top is crooked. I'm just not 100% sure what's going to happen with our spindles. Might all be arcing on every single one. They'll kind of zigzag. The magic of lasers. Basically what we figured out is we're just going to go center on all these, do it the same so it matches. Those are our little plates that Tegan was working on in the shop the other day. So we're going to have those on every corner, two by six on top, and everything is going to be slightly wonky, but there's nothing we can do about it because these posts are just wonky. Just a little hot up here. It says 23 downstairs. It's 25 almost upstairs. Little teaser of what it's going to look like. Tegan slapped this up the other night just to make sure everything's going to work, which it does. I got in all of the bottom braces, so not going anywhere. So the top ones that we did, we did 15 sixteenths for the holes. So then we just sand down the dowels just enough that they'll fit through. And you kind of tap them, hammer them in. The bottom ones have extra space. So we're going to, basically we can fight the top side, which is easier. Slide the bottoms in. Bottoms are going to get glued. Tops aren't going to get glued. But top and bottom, I think, we're going to just shoot brad nail into all these. So that way they should stay at, you know, nice and straight. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the ugliest end and putting it up because then these ones you don't really notice as much as down here because when you're kind of looking at it, you look down at it sort of. And then we are pretty much forcing them into those smaller holes, the 15 16 holes. And then, you know, you kind of have to twist it and, you know, force them in. Uh, some of them, tegan has been sanding down just to get them to fit in there, but then they fit like super tight like you can lift the whole thing from just one of them then while Tegan is gluing the bottom holes with that same crazy wood glue that we were using on there I get these straightened out you can see it is zigzaggy but from the side if you ignore that it all looks good and then when we put our 2x6 across the top no one will notice it'll look perfect Tegan except everyone will know because yet again, I just told everyone that nothing's perfect. It's pretty much life. We did it. It's all up. All the railing is on. So you can see again how it's... But if you go down like this, you can't see anything that's weird. It all just looks like railing. It's beautiful. Yeah. That's what it was missing. Look at that. Look at how good that looks. It's not even stained yet. Needs the top on there. Ooh. That looks so good. So yeah, so you can kind of see how like the all white is not all white anymore. Right? Like when we were first getting everything all done and it's all drywall and it's all painted white, blah, 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 looks kind of boring. But between the fireplace and we got all this, we got all that, and then we got up over there, we got all kinds of stuff going on. Plus we got the vanity stuff going on. We got, what else? We got the flooring is going to be super cool. Baseboards and trims are all going to be wood still. 
Got the kitchen is going to be more on the bland side, but we're going to do like a, uh, what do you call it, Tegan? Uh, not backsplash, what do they call that? Like a accent feature, wall. accent wall, feature wall type thing as our backsplash using other flooring that we got that's like free. So can't get better than free. And then, yeah, and then Tegan has like a whole bunch of like super nice looking lights and everything that are going to go up in here. We have a whole bunch of, we ended up with like way better uh, like faucets and taps and sinks and stuff like that than we thought we were going to get because we just were watching deals, like just watching on, you know, a lot of stuff I got from like Canadian Tire, like of all places, Black Friday sale at Canadian Tire and we were getting like, you know, really good quality taps and I got the sinks for the bathrooms and everything all from there. Um, we got stuff from Lowe's. Our kitchen sink at Lowe's was like 70% off or something, like wickedly on sale. So, in the theme of keeping things square, we went with a 45 on either side for the top here. See how good that looks. So we managed to line it up nice and perfect with the center of our 45 on the center of that. And yeah, you can really see how once you throw that board on top, you can't see any of the twists and bends and all the goofy stuff. But the next thing is, where Tegan is there, we have to try and figure out what crazy angle that corner actually ended up because we doubt that it's actually a perfect 90. So we're going to do some sample pieces. That's the best thing you can do is do some little samples. Yeah, you waste a bit of material, but it's better than wasting the good stuff. Tried 45. No. Tried 44, wrong direction, now we're going to 46. Here's what we're working with. We got twisted post, twisted 2x4 cut things. This corner will never line up because this is twisted. And then trying to get this, trying to get this all lined up nice, which is pretty close. And yeah, of course my saw non-sliding so you have to cut flip and cut so it's damn near impossible to get the same line so we'll have to do some filler in there sand her down making progress got her angle cut got it lined up taking to get me screws bada bing bada boom getting there everything's wonky but straight enough and then this short one this one we'll have to just manipulate it and mess with it to cut it down to get it to line up with this. Well, it's not perfect, but it's going to have to do. Got our corners all nice and aligned. Ended up being a 46 and a 45, but then we still had, kind of just from the curve, a little bit of a gap there, and then we're just offset, right? Because we're not, you know, we're two different angles that don't add up, blah, blah, blah. And then we got a little bit of a gap there, but we did our little corner on there too. We went a little bit less because there was an ugly knot we were trying to not get into, but eh, kind of matches. Looking so finished now. Gonna move in next week, Tegan, right? There we go. Other than doing some screws down the centers in between the posts, we need some uh, shorter ones so we don't blow right through the bottom. Look at how nice that turned out. It looks so good. Took us, like, probably, what would you say, Tegan? How many, how many weeks of total work time did it take to do this? Like, if someone was hired to do this, it probably would have taken, like, a month almost. Between getting the lumber, like, picking the good lumber, getting the good lumber, ripping everything down. No, but we spent weekends. Like you figure, I spent two full days myself just cutting, uh, doing the ends on these. Like it's took forever, but you sneezing. But yeah, it turned out. I mean, that's the thing. Once you get this all nice and straight, we actually measured in between the top railing after we had already done it, and it's within I think an eighth of an inch. From one side to the other as you measure across in deviation it doesn't go narrower it doesn't go further it's like pretty much perfectly straight 
we just picked really, really, really straight boards to start with and just kind of let them do what they wanted to. So, I mean, you got some spots here that this will get sanded down, look all pretty. And then we use those uh, GRK finishing screws again. There's our cutter angles off. So Tegan's gonna do a little bit of sanding on this this weekend, and she's gonna probably start on some stain. And what's the plan for the stain color? Just like a lighter coffee-ish or something? Yeah, I wanna get lighter than like the ceiling. Tegan was joking about how it's nice and wide so you can walk down this. And I said to her that as a kid, I definitely would have walked down this or jumped from this one to that one, 100%. So I foresee that happening at some point in the future.